Welcome to this Arnold Culliford tutorial for modern daily knitting on duplicate stitch. This tutorial is part of a series to accompany the patterns in MDK field guide number 23, Glow. All of the patterns in this field guide have been designed by the amazing Arna and Carlos. These are the beautiful rosy mittens which feature a Norwegian style design knitted at a firm gauge to give warmth and wear. The back of the hand has this lovely motif with five different colours and the palm of the hand, shown here, just features two colours. The best way to create these is to do the knitting part of the project in just two colours and then to add the three contrast colours at the end with duplicate stitch. Whilst it is possible to knit with more than two colours in a row, since the palm here only uses two colours, you'd either need to strand your contrast yarn a long way along, or you'd need to break and rejoin the contrasts on every single row where you were working with them. So by knitting the mittens in two colours and adding those three contrast colours in later, you're going to save yourself an awful lot of work. Here's my swatch. I've knitted it in the cream and the red. All of the contrast stitches, which eventually will be blue, pink and yellow, have been worked in the cream yarn. And I'm now going to show you how to use duplicate stitch to cover those cream stitches with your contrast colour. Look closely at your knitted fabric and you'll see that each stitch is a V shape. So we've got this central red V shape here. And then here's the V shape of the cream stitch next to it and the one next to that. And as you go along, they're all V shapes. Duplicate stitch is going to do exactly as it sounds. You're going to follow the yarn of the stitch in the fabric and duplicate it in your contrast color. The basic move is going to be to start at the bottom of the V so for this cream one here, to start at the bottom of the V, then pass your tapestry needle behind the two legs of the stitch above, and then come back down at the base of the V where you started. You can work sets of duplicate stitches in any direction, and I'm going to demonstrate a variety of combinations in this video. It's not like when you knit and you have to go across the row in this direction. When you're duplicating, you can go up a column, in the other direction, back down, however you like. It's a good idea to use your chart to plan how you're going to work your contrast stitches. And I'm going to be adding the pink ones first. And I'm working on this section of the chart here. And I'm going to start up here and I'm going to go down and then across and then up and then along here. So I'm kind of working in a bit of a circle and that's just going to minimize how many ends I have to sew in and how far I have to carry the yarn between areas of color. So for this first area of pink, I'm going to be covering this stitch here, then the one next to it, and then the two below, and then one diagonally from there. Thread a length of your contrast yarn onto a blunt tapestry needle and you're going to leave a good tail of yarn on the wrong side which you will weave in later. And here's our first stitch that we're going to sew and so we're going to come up from the wrong side into the base of that stitch. Can tell I've left plenty of tail there. So I've come up at the base of that stitch and now because I'm working a stitch from the right to the left I'm going to go behind the two legs of the stitch above also from right to left. So I just pass the needle behind those and pull the yarn through. Just be careful not to pull it too tightly. You just want to match the tension of the fabric below. And then to complete the stitch, I'm going to go back down to the wrong side at the base of the stitch where I started. And that gives us 
our first duplicated stitch. Just give it a little fiddle so that you're happy with how the tension is. And we're now going to come up at the base of the stitch next door. And again, behind the two legs of the stitch above. Gently pulling it through to match the tension of the fabric below and back down in the center where you started. And it's worth as you go along, just kind of call it fussing fussing a little bit with those strands of yarn just to make sure that you're happy with how they're sitting on the fabric, happy that they're covering the stitches below and all of the rest of it. Right, we've done one from right to left and two, and now we're going to go into the stitch below. So again, we come up at the base of the stitch. And now we're going behind the legs of the stitch above and we can go behind the duplicated stitch and the cream stitch in the fabric. Gently pulling it through and back down where we came up. And another one below that. Always looking for the base of the V where you start. And then going behind the two legs of the stitch above. And back down. We've now got to just do one last stitch in this area and it's the one diagonally below that, next to the red stitch. Coming up. Under the two legs. And back down again. Just using your tapestry needle if you need to get one leg a little tighter or a bit looser. Give that fabric a bit of a pull in all directions and make sure that you're happy with how your area of contrast stitches is looking. The next area that I need to work is going to run all the way along the top of this red swirl here. So my yarn is currently over here and I need to go down there. So I'm just going to turn it inside out and just weave it in a little bit between those two so that I haven't got a long float of yarn that fingers could get caught in. So I want to come back up over here. Here's the wrong side of my work. So I'm just literally going to catch in under a few loops on the wrong side just to take that pink yarn down to where I next need it. I'm just going in behind a couple of the pearl bumps so that I'm ready to come up in the right place. I'm now coming up here and this time I'm going to be working from left to right. So I'm going to go from left to right behind the two legs of the stitch above. And once you've got into the swing of your duplicate stitch, rather than going down at the base and coming back up at the base of the next stitch, you can actually do this part as one move. So there's, there's me doing it as two, going down and then coming back up again. I'm now going behind that one. And then I'm going down and I know that I need to come up 
for the next stitch will be the one above. So rather than doing it as two moves, I'm actually just going to bring my needle back up in the right spot for the next stitch. If you're new to duplicate stitch, I'd recommend doing it in separate steps for a good little patch until you feel really confident about where you're going. And then, and then you can start switching that into a single move. So behind those two, and I'm now coming back down through the bottom of that stitch and I want to come up in the one next door now. Behind the two legs of the stitch above. Back down in the base of that one and again I'm going to come up above for the next stitch. I recommend stopping every three or four stitches and just spending a little bit of time getting them looking neat. Nobody's work starts off looking neat. It uh, usually takes just a little bit of easing the yarns round. Just fuss with them a little bit and you'll find that you can get them looking tidy and covering the cream stitches below really neatly. There we go. There was just a little bit, it was all sitting a little bit loosely and just tightening it up has really helped there. Once you've finished working an area of colour, uh, go back to the wrong side and thread your tail onto the tapestry needle and then you're just wanting to weave in your ends on the wrong side of the work so that they're nice and secure and the fabric isn't going to unravel. It doesn't matter hugely which loops you gently go under. Just uh, double check every so often it's not showing through on the right side, which that isn't. And then I always tend to double back on myself when I'm weaving in ends because that change of direction just helps to make sure that it's absolutely secure. Once you're happy with your weaving, just trim it off. And now you're ready to work on the next contrast color. I'm now working my stitches with the blue contrast yarn and just repeating that exact same process. I'm going into the stitch below here. So I'm gonna come up straight in the middle of the stitch below. Behind the two legs of the stitch above. Just nudging the yarn so that it sits as neatly over the cream as possible. And again, going into the one below. under those two legs. There's a real balance between pulling tight enough that the fabric sits flat, but not pulling so tight that you get to see that peak of cream from the row below. So just tweak it and adjust it as you go along. So I just go down to the wrong side of the row on that final, to the wrong side of the work on that final stitch. You then just continue working each of the areas of contrast colour until you've added them all. I hope that's given you heaps of confidence in adding colours to your work with duplicate stitch. We have lots more tutorials, hints and tips over on our website. Click the link up here to visit and explore. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel with the round button down here so that you're sure not to miss our next video tutorial. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye bye.